Thank you for watching videos by Jeff Sibelius and FamilyTravelPhotos.com. In this episode, I'll review the creative and manual camera control settings for the unique Q500 4K, Typhoon H, and Blade Chroma 4K, and explain the uses for EV, white balance, shutter speed, and ISO. This episode is part of a series of videos designed to help you fly your Q500 quadcopter. This episode applies specifically to the Q500 4K, Typhoon H, and Blade Chroma 4K drones. Let's get started with Episode 9, Creative Camera Settings. In Episode 8, I introduced you to the Q500's basic camera settings that allow you to choose video resolution, image style, photo type, and audio. In this episode, we go to the left side of your screen for more settings that allow you to better control how your camera captures the lighting conditions, referred to as white balance settings, and how bright or dark your video is, which is referred to as your exposure settings. Let's start with white balance. We interrupt this tutorial for a quick definition. White balance refers to the lighting conditions where you are shooting. You may know that pictures taken in sunlight often have a different color cast than those taken in cloudy conditions or under fluorescent lights. Back to the tutorial. Let's start with white balance. If you look at this column of buttons, you will find choices for different lighting situations. By default, the camera is set to auto white balance. This means the camera will determine the proper white balance for you. If you like how the current auto white balance setting looks, you can pick the lock button to keep the camera from adjusting during your flight. This keeps your colors from fluctuating during your recording, but it could cause your white balance to be off for portions of your flight, since it will not adjust to changing conditions. The next several buttons allow you to set the camera to adjust for sunny, cloudy, fluorescent, incandescent, and sunrise sunset lighting. I've found that these presets are not consistently reliable. I encourage you to compare auto white balance with the closest preset for your shooting situation and go with the one that looks best to you. Along with white balance, your Seago 3 offers a way to control the brightness or darkness of your video without moving into fully manual mode. This involves the use of a feature called EV, or Exposure Value, Compensation. Your Seago 3 camera will automatically average out its exposure to capture what it thinks is the proper amount of light. Unfortunately, in contrasty situations, the camera can be fooled. You can address this with EV Compensation, which allows you to tell the camera to overexpose or underexpose the video to compensate for when the auto exposure gets fooled. On the left side of the screen, next to your white balance settings, click the button called Plus or Minus Auto. This opens a vertical slider to the left labeled EV. It starts at zero and moves up and down in half-step increments. If you rotate the dial into negative numbers, you're telling the camera to underexpose what it thinks the proper exposure should be. As you turn the dial down, see how the image gets darker. If you slide the EV compensation into positive numbers, you're telling the camera to let in more light than its meter would suggest. The higher your number, the more light you're letting in. Exposure compensation is a good way to keep your videos properly exposed. You can adjust your EV during flights as lighting situations change. Those are the options you have for the Seago 3's automatic settings. By default, the Seago 3 camera will choose the settings to create a properly exposed image for you. It does a pretty good job of doing this, but it can be fooled. Also, as your camera moves, it will adjust for changes in light, resulting in a corrective change to your video's exposure referred to as blooming. 
for those who have more photographic experience or those who want to manage the camera settings themselves. You can leave the auto settings and delve into manual photo options. Look at the transmitter. See this red circle with an A on it? Push that and it changes to an M. Notice that your menu changes as well. Now you see two sliders. One of them allows you to change the shutter speed and the other controls your ISO. You photographers will be looking for a way to change your aperture, but you're out of luck. Drone cameras almost always have a fixed aperture. I think the Q500 is fixed at f2.8. This means you're left with shutter speed and ISO for manual adjustments to control your light. We interrupt this tutorial again to define two terms for you. First, shutter speed refers to how long the shutter remains open as it takes each photo that makes up your video. Don't confuse shutter speed with frame rate. Here's what I mean. This graphic represents five frames of a video. Let's say you shoot with 30 frames, or 30 pictures, per second. That means each frame spans a thirtieth of a second. The frame starts by opening the shutter on your camera every thirtieth of a second. That's a constant throughout your video. Frame rate doesn't change unless you stop recording and change the frame rate yourself. Shutter speed refers to how long the shutter is held open for each frame. So, even though your frame rate is 30 frames per second, when shooting video with a drone, your shutter speed won't be open for that full span of 1 30th second for each frame. When the frame begins, the shutter opens and closes and then waits for the next frame to start. How long it remains open is your shutter speed. This also means there will be a short period of time from the moment the shutter closes until the start of the next frame, where no photo is being taken. Keep that in mind and I'll return to that thought in a minute. My second term to define is ISO. ISO is a measure of how sensitive your camera's sensor is to light. You can adjust the ISO to make it absorb light more slowly or more quickly. Why would you do that? You adjust ISO to allow your shutter speed to go slow or fast. The lower the ISO number, the less sensitive it is to light, meaning the longer you must leave the shutter open to allow in enough light. Your Q500's lowest ISO is 100. A high ISO means the sensor is more sensitive, so it takes in more light, allowing you to use a faster shutter speed. Your Q500's highest ISO is 6400. So why would you care about ISO? Ideally, you want to shoot at a lower ISO for the sake of image quality. As you increase your light sensitivity, you also increase the amount of grain in your image. Gra no, not that kind of grain. Grain, or noise, looks like speckly distortion on a video, especially when magnified. A high ISO can be very helpful because it allows you to shoot in dark settings, like night photography, but it's a trade-off. You get to shoot in darker settings, but your images will have more noise as a result. Definitions done, now back to the tutorial. This means you're left with shutter speed and ISO for manual adjustments to control your light. To find the right balance of shutter speed and ISO, set your shutter speed where you want it and move the ISO until the image on your screen looks good. So why would you want to use manual settings? Well, the first reason would be to avoid the exposure blooming I described previously. More importantly, the general rule of thumb is that you get the smoothest video when your shutter speed is set for twice your frame rate. So for example, if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, your ideal shutter speed would be 1 60th of a second. Why is this true? Remember our graphic. See that big gap from the time your shutter closes until it opens again for the next frame. All that while your Q500 continues to move and your subject continues to move. Theoretically speaking, those gaps will create a stuttering effect when played back at normal speed. Look at this graphic of the quote unquote ideal shutter speed. That space where no photo is being taken is smaller than before. Also, 
Your shutter is open longer so your Q500 and your subject have a little more time to move while it's open. This creates a slight motion blur and that softens the image and makes the resulting video smoother. So how do you adjust these settings? To find the right balance of shutter speed and ISO, set your shutter speed where you want it and move the ISO until the image on your screen looks good. The problem is, when you're shooting in bright sunlight, it's impossible to do this. On a sunny day, even the lowest ISO you can pick, 100, still allows in too much light with a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second. What you really need are sunglasses for your camera to block out some of that light so you can shoot at 1 60th of a second. Fortunately, this solution is available to you in the form of a device called a neutral density filter. ND filters attach to your camera and block out a portion of the light that strikes the lens. They're called neutral density filters because they're color neutral. They block out an equal amount of all colors of light so they don't affect your color balance. Neutral density filters are typically marked ND4, ND8, ND16, even ND32. The higher the number, the more light they block. When you put an ND filter on your camera, you block a significant amount of the light entering the lens. This allows you to slow down your shutter speed so you can shoot at that optimal twice your frame rate speed to get the smoothest video possible. Don't let this get you confused. An ND filter doesn't make your picture darker on your Q500. It forces your Seago 3 camera to slow down its shutter speed. Here are two photos taken with my Nikon. I didn't use a filter for the one on the left. I did use an ND filter for the one on the right. Notice that the brightness of the image is the same on both shots. But look at the water. When I slow the camera down with the ND filter, the water moves while the shutter is open to create an almost ghost-like effect. Admittedly, it would be tough to slow your video down this much on your Q500, but even slowing it a little should, in principle, smooth out your footage. Here's how you put a filter on your lens. Note that you don't have to remove the camera from your quad to install your ND filter. I did that simply for the convenience of shooting this video. First, you must remove the clear filter that was on your camera from the factory. See these two small ridges? With your fingernails, turn the ridges counterclockwise to loosen the clear filter from your camera. This filter is extremely flimsy, so handle it gently. Remove it and put the filter in some kind of protective storage so you can use it again later if you want. Once the clear filter is removed, put the ND filter on the lens in the same way. Line it up and this time turn it clockwise. Obviously, you must handle your camera very carefully as you attach the ND filter. Now, with the ND filter on the camera, you can slow the shutter speed down. I first tested an ND8 filter on my camera and found that it didn't block enough light. Even at ISO 100, I couldn't shoot at a shutter speed slower than 125th to 160th of a second on a sunny day. Any slower and my image was overblown. I replaced the ND8 filter with an ND16 filter and I was able to slow down the shutter speed to a 60th of a second at ISO 100. I then did a flight with the ND16 filter at a 60th of a second and a comparison flight without the ND filter at 1 1600th of a second. I followed that with a third comparison video where I allowed the camera to set its own ISO and shutter speed. I posted all three video clips straight out of the camera where you can download and test them yourself. Find those links in the description below. Personally, I don't see any improvement offered by the ND16 filter. The video shot with the auto settings was a bit brighter than what I picked for the manual settings. But I don't see that the smoothness was enhanced by the filter. Several people are doing tests with ND filters now. I'll put links to good examples in my description below as I find them. That concludes the camera settings for the Q500 4K, Blade Chroma 4K, and Typhoon H. 
This concludes Episode 9 of my video series for unique Q500 owners. Be sure to watch Episode 8 for a discussion of basic camera settings on the Q500 4K, Typhoon H, and Blade Chroma 4K. I hope you found this video to be helpful. I posted other videos that are linked below. Be sure to click those links to learn more about flying your drone. If you liked the video, please hit the like button below and subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot more videos coming on how to fly drones, and you'll be notified when I release more videos in the future. Comments and ideas for future videos are greatly appreciated, and I really do try to respond. Thanks for watching.